Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the recent video that came out which talks about using AI to play Pokemon using reinforcement learning. So in this video I'm going to talk about the coding that goes behind this program that he created. So here I've downloaded the repo here, it's called Pokemon Red Experiments. And this is the readme that you can see here. So up here is the animation of part of the clip that you'll see in the video. Here's the link video on the YouTube, you could go check it out. And if you look through here, you see that they recommend using Python 3.10. So you could go ahead and do the pip install yourself and then run the main program you can see here. It's called run pretrained interactive.py. So if you look through this um, file structure, you're going to see these folders here. So um, you want to first uh, see where this file is, right? The main file that we'll be running. So if I search for this, um, you're going to see run pretrain interactive. You can see it's located inside baselines. Okay, so inside your baselines folder, we see this file. And then you see here are all the requirements that you would use. So this is very handy. You could create your own virtual environment. I have a video up on that. Go check it out. But this will pretty much help you set up all the versions that you need for the right um, the different modules that you'll pip install. So it's a nice and easy way to uh, organize that. So if you look inside this run pre-trained interactive, this is your main function here. Okay, so this is the main program that you'll begin with. So inside of here, you'll see that um, it does some, it gets some arguments from the user. And here we have the configurations for the environment. So if any of the configurations were changed, you could see inside this change environment um, function here, it's gonna update based off of the arguments that the user passed in. So going back here, you see there's some uh, CPU setups, and then here we call the make environment. So this make environment will actually call the red gym environment. So you can see red gym is imported from this module. And all of these stable baseline is part of the reinforcement learning modules. So if we take a look at this, the red gym, um, what this does is it's going to create our environment. And then what we're going to do here is set a random seed. Okay, so, and then inside here, if we go further, right, we make environment. And then if you go down, you can see that it's going to do some uh, additional things here. So if we take a look again at the make environment, right, this, this will call the return init. And we have a set random seed here that it'll do, okay? But we're not gonna worry too much about that. So inside of here, you can see that uh, the main thing is once it creates your environment, what it does is it's gonna, in here, it's gonna do um, some more setup for the model. So you can see it's based on the steps, environment, raw buffer size, and all that. It's gonna set it for you. So that, that will allow you to um, just pretty much the settings that you need for the rest of the program, okay? And then you can see here, you can see here in the red gym environment, this is actually a custom function. So if I jump into this, um, this is um, inherited from the gymnasium module. So this red gym environment here is where you see all of these things being initialized based off of the um, configuration parameters passed in as a dictionary. So you could, some of it could be modified if you choose to modify, otherwise it's gonna do the default that it has. Okay, so you set all that up and then here you have the different buttons that you can press that's set up here as a list. And you have different arrows and more release buttons and so on. And then here you have some uh, memory uh, allocation set up. And then later here you have the the um, Game Boy setup to allow you to play the game. And you can see up here it's been imported called Pi Boy. So this will allow you to play the game. Okay, so if we go down a little bit further, after you set that up, you could set up the screen here, and then you have some emulation speed that you'll set up. And then in the very last step of the initialization is this reset. So inside the reset, what this will do is it's gonna do some, it's gonna initialize the KNN, which we see here, will 
So the nearest neighbor search, which, will, which it'll use later for some frame comparison. And then you have uh, more code logic here that you can see is getting some memory and frame initialization. So it's um, setting that up. And if you're saving the video, there's certain options here that you can see uh, the directory uh, setting all the directory and names up. Okay. And then here you initialize some of the parameters here to zero. Okay. So that's what the reset will do. So after that, you can see um, if I go back to here, you can see that in the gymnasium, right after we call the init, we're going to come back down here. So we make the environment, which we did. We talked about that part. And then um, it's going to check if your file exists and then set up some of these parameters here, like the steps, environment, and buffers for some of the memory. OK, so the main logic that's going to be happening is right here in this while loop. So while true is going to keep going on and repeating. Um, it's going to do some model prediction. And then the step The step is the main part that's happening. So the step here is going to take in an action and then return these parameters here, OBS, rewards, terminated, truncated, and info. But let's go ahead and step in the step to see what the step is doing. OK, so this is a core function for this um, program that's happening. So first off, it's going to call its um, function inside this class called run action on emulator. So inside the run action on emulator, you can see it's the main thing that interacts with the uh, PyBoy. So this will allow you to you know, do the different actions. So you can see that um, it's going to go through all the actions. And then for i equals 8, it compares the action. If it's like less than four, it does something. And if it's between uh, three and six, it'll do something else. So these are just some parameters that were set up. And then you can see it adds the video frame here. So you can see inside the add video frame is pretty much just getting the pictures. Okay, So you can see in the video, there was a bunch of pictures that he got from the readme, like all these pictures. Um, some of this is what's going to help with getting the frames. Okay, so. Once we go back, let's go back to the step function, right? So inside the step, we were talking about the run emulator, right? So uh, we add the frames, which we just talked about. And then here you have append agent stats. So inside append agent stats, you can see we get the x, y position, and the map. Then here we have the levels, which um, we have the memory addresses here. And then you can see that it's going to append all the steps, last action, HP, frames, death, events, and so on. It's going to append all the stats. Okay, So after it does that, um, it's going to render here. So we can see the render function, uh, pretty much getting all the pixels, and then just showing all the pixels so that you can see um, the rendering. That's the basic idea of the rendering. So if we hop back in here, after it renders, um, it's going to trim off memory from frame for a KNN index. So it does some things to find the start of the frame. And then update frame KNN index. So what this one does is um, it's just going to use KNN, which is uh, K nearest neighbors. And it's going to compare to see, you know, it's going to find the nearest frames. So if self.get level sum is greater than 22, um, it's going to do this init that we talked about here. Okay. Otherwise, it does some other checks. So if the index is empty, add the current frame. Otherwise, check for the nearest frame and add if current. Okay. So it's going to keep track of the different frames, uh, different index, keep track of the index. Okay. And then you have this heal reward. So if we jump into that, we see that. Um, it's going to compare the last health. So if your current health is greater, it's going to do some action. And then it's going to give you some reward if you have more health than previous based off of this calculation. Okay, So it's, it's like a reward system for you to stay, stay in better health condition. Okay, So after you do that, we're going to call the update reward. So inside the update reward, you could see that um, it's going to group the rewards together. So if I jump into group rewards, you can see that it does this formula calculation to calculate the rewards. And again, this is probably something you could play around with if you want to see what makes the program behave better. And then here we have the get game stats reward. So if I jump into here, 
you can see this is a core uh, state scores that um, he talked about in his video here. So we see we have the event, level, heal, op level, dead, badge, and explore. And some of these could be played around with to see what works best for you. So going back to here, we talk about get game. And then after that, you have old progress where you, you get the state, and then you get a new progress. So um, from the old and new, you pretty much find a difference, and then you will update the reward based off of that. Okay, so you're kind of keeping track of the progress you're making. So once you do that, you, you want to get the last health by using the read HP fraction. So inside of here, it just does some summations um, off of the different, um, you can see there's like six values, which is probably all your Pokemons probably. So that's what the read HP fraction is. And then here we do some, doing some short, term reward memory. We won't go into too much details on the reinforcement learning aspect, but here you can see it's just getting, storing more memory um, and then using that later on. Okay, so we wanna check if the step limit is reached. So we jump inside the check if done. So here we come in and check, do some, here's a counter variable that he saved. This should probably be a const somewhere, but you know, he's checking some limits and then Based off of that limit, he takes some actions to see if he's done with the max steps. Okay, and then finally, you have a save and print info here. So inside here, this is what logs the different things. So you can see that um, based if you if these are based on the conditions of these things, you'll print out the rewards, the step count, um, the rewards here, and the save video status, and so on. Okay, so. That's pretty much the end of this main function. And you can see that's pretty much all the main logic that we talked about. So if we go back into this main function after the step is called, um, it's gonna use here to render. So if I jump into render, it's gonna be the same function to render. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this um, repo review. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.